So today we are finally going to the Ukai after months of trying to convince my mom also because there's a pandemic going on but given that we do have a few ground rules that we have to follow for our safety and as well as some tips I want to give to you guys in case you do want to go Ukai as well because there are a few things that we have to be conscious about so very first thing you should know what you're looking for the y2k trend is just taking all over pinterest as you can see here so these are my style inspo so there's a lot of animal print a lot of cami tops silkware as well as in i don't really identify with the y2k trend for my personal style i have been leaning towards the 80s 70s 60s even type of years decades so a lot of groovy prints flared sleeves halter tops are also nice even everything that i'm looking for i am going to only one shot that has everything so that I can lessen my movements in the public space and hopefully not come in contact with Miss Rona because I don't want to get the Rona and that is actually part of my second tip which is to keep it simple aside from only choosing one area to limit your exposure that also means not wearing any accessories when you go to the ukai putting your hair up even though you look ugly in it not wearing any makeup even though you haven't slept um, wearing very simple clothing that is airy just like this cotton dress but all of that is just normal ukai thing so you also have our bag and you know it has the basic things like a wallet that's actually empty <laughs> some alcohol to spray the virus away <coughs> and antihistamines now if you're asking why do i have this these antihistamines are actually for when the ukai gets too dusty and i have an allergic reaction but of course there's also some new normal essentials which we will just talk in about in the car because i'm actually running late so let's go let's go And now we're here, so hi. And then we're going to talk about essentials, of course, mask and face shield, gloves. Garbage <laughs> box. Ready? Ready. As we step into the ukai, the third and final key that we have to remember is to keep your distance. Now I'm lucky enough to be able to go to a shop that's as big and spacious as this one. It's one of the reasons why I chose it and it also just has everything. But if you can't go to that type of ukai, at least go there when there's not a lot of people. For me, I think the most ideal time would be noon even though it's hot. Really early morning once the ukai opens is also a good time slot. Aside from distancing yourself from people, you want to distance yourself from the clothes. How does that make any sense? Don't try anything on. Now that's the rule that my mom laid out for me and it was honestly a challenge to shop in an ukai after so long and then not being familiar anymore with how to tell if something is my size or not. But it was for my safety so definitely there will be some pieces on that are too large for me but you can always just sell those pieces or alter them to fit you. So when I first started going through the racks, I was a little bit conscious. Because I know it's an ukai, but their prices can sometimes be just as good as brand new. But eventually, I did come to realize that they were actually on sale with all the little sale flags all over the store. I don't know how I missed it. Their prices were like 80% off, so it's at a good price. Anyway, I'm unable to show you the full process of me choosing each and every piece of clothing I got simply because there was copyrighted Sunday music on full blast in the background. So that music, along with my face mask and face shield, you guys can literally not hear me. After that initial picking of the clothing, I realized I can't buy all of these clothing. So I had to sit down on their sofa and pick out pieces I will keep and pieces I will not keep. So just enjoy this montage of me having the time of my life in the ukai.
Okay, so I'm back from the Ugay. Wait, what's that? Oh, you mean I'm wearing the exact same dress, pretending that it's the same day when it's obvious that it's not because of my makeup? Exactly. Anyway, all the clothing has been washed and it's ready for us to try on. However, this is actually not my first time filming. This is my second time trying to film because during the first time around, I was on zero sleep and I could not make any comprehensive sentences about the clothing. And I also just blanked out while I was checking out items at the Ukai, so I completely forgot my receipt and now I don't know how much these pieces actually are because they are no tag. I tried my best to indicate the price but as a general rule of thumb, everything was below 200 pesos. Okay? So these are majority of the clothes that I got from the Ukai. This is not even everything and because of that, I can only talk about so much. I'm mostly going to be focusing on my favorites and the ones that actually fit me so okay let's first start off with this outfit that fits my groovy lola aesthetic this lava colored mesh top is one of the first things that i picked up at the ukai and you can just see the joy on my face when i first saw this and you can imagine how much happier i would be once i found out this bitch has some flared sleeves it has everything I want. Warm color, check. 70s print, check. Flared sleeves, check. Even though the stuff is quite long on me, twisting and tying it gives it that modern silhouette without losing the vintage vibe. Now all those things are great about this stuff, but wearing it can give you permanent arms up disease where you can't stop putting down your arms to show off the flare sleeves. Sadly, there is no cure for it and scientists today are still baffled why. To go with that lovely lava top, we have these purple corduroy pants in this shade of warm purple, barney purple. Um, it's a shade that goes really well with reds and oranges, feels really nice, and these pants are the only ones that can actually fit me this whole haul, so you know. I was wearing this outfit, my dad told me I looked like my Lola, which is a compliment because that is exactly the vibe I'm going for. Just like this brown floral top paired with green pants that overall makes you look so antique, you look like a Nara tree. Moving on to the outfits I classify as 90s family on a cruise ship to Hawaii. First, we have the annoying children on a cruise ship that won't shut up. No, literally, this is a children's top. And that just proves to the testament that you should always look through every wrap at the ukai and one of those is the children's section. However, just make sure you choose a stretchy fabric so it can actually fit your gigantic head. Paired with that is an azul skirt with a print that can make you smell white flower oil. Tita jokes aside, the mermaid fit of this skirt is to die for. No, literally to die for, like a siren. This will look good on anybody, and I mean anybody. And that contrast piping detail with the neon pink and the white on the skirt, just a cherry on top of a whole, whole ass Sunday snack, okay? Now we're on land with the honeymoon phase with this emerald green dress with floral print and a beautiful pearl neckline. And just like the mermaid skirt earlier, the way this dress flares out on the body is to die for. And the smocked back detail just makes the fit even more exquisite, especially around the chest area, if you know what I mean. The whole outfit just makes me want to pull out the ukulele and sing in cars and white man say. To complete this Hawaiian aesthetic, we have the mature 90s mom that has way too many kids to handle and is secretly filing for divorce. We have this blue mesh top and it's so delicate with this dandelion print and it's blue ruffle lace trim and a little bit outdated when it comes to the silhouette but I just zhuzh it up a little bit by tying it and make it look a bit more cropped. Paired with these are some cream linen trousers that don't actually fit me but the whole outfit just screams live love and laugh energy and next up we have cottagecore personally i love cottagecore i have always adored vintage dresses and skirts ever since and this floral pleated watercolor print skirt is no exception honestly i believe that pleats like these indicate that a garment is well made because it's like mesmerizing fabric origami. I can barely fold paper. And then I just paired this with another mesh top. I know we have a lot of mesh today, but this one's in orange. Loki is not really cottagecore. It falls more under the Korean fashion world. It's kind of sad that it doesn't fit me as perfectly as it should. 
You can always thrift flip that. I just love oranges, okay? And this top, when you wear it, it gives you life. It gives you all the vitamin C you would ever need. And now, the part you have all been waiting for. Y2K fashion, baby! So first up, we actually have like four different tank tops from a 3 for 100 promo, two pastel tops in green and purple, which have since been chopped into these Y2K patchwork tops. Honestly, was not expecting to like this trend, but given how easy it is and honestly sustainable because you're recycling fabric, this top is so cute and we'll have a video on it very soon next episode. Okay, day why? Don't miss it, okay? Why 2 trend is just super into that handmade raw type of look. So patchwork tops, the reverse stitching on this top, and the hand-sewn sequence on this other tank top. I paired majority of these tops with a denim skirt that looks pretty underwhelming on the rack, but once you've tried it on, the fit is beautiful. The embroidered hem is also something unique. Low-key country boy, I love you territory. Now in semi white uk and semi groovy territory, we have these Ralph Lauren pants. Like look at that tag. I freaked out when I saw it because when I saw it, it had a tag and everything and I only got it for 150 pesos or so. I have been looking for a bold shade of green pants ever since and it even said 26 on the pants and I can fit in a 26 if I wanted to. So happy and I thought this was going to be the gem of the whole call. But then I tried it on and I have never been more disappointed than Obi-Wan in Star Wars. These pants are fucking low-waisted. I hate it. It can barely fit my ass if I tried. These pants would have been perfect for Y2K, no lie, but it's a trend that appeals to a skinnier demographic and I draw the line at the pants. Mine are staying high-waisted. Thank you very much. Luckily, I can try to make these pants high-waisted, but there isn't much hope given how low-waisted it is. It, it's really at my hips, so we'll find a purpose for this in a future video. <coughs> Not to worry though, we have major comeback with what I believe is the gem of this whole haul. It's these orange velvet zebra print leather jacket. This jacket has to be the underdog of the whole call because when I first saw it, I actually thought it was 500 pesos but then turns out it's actually just 200 pesos or something. So I bought it immediately even though I was having my doubts because it's kind of too bold for my liking. But then I tried it on and let me tell you, the fit was exquisite. The shoulder pads, the boxy cut, the leather collar just peeking out. It's chef's kiss. It just goes so well with basic outfits and even maybe a David Bowie inspired costume. I don't know. Okay, now let's have a speed run of everything I have to sew slash sell. In 3, 2, 1, go. Two cardigans and a skirt to be turned into coordinates. This leopard top with questionable three fourth sleeves. And all the pants that don't fit me in this call. Overall, there will be some hits, some misses, especially since I didn't try anything at the Ukai as a safety precaution, but nothing will go to waste. I will either sew it or sell it at my shop. So, cue the music. I hope you guys enjoyed the very first episode of Luck by Ukai. For our next video, we're going to have a lot of Ukai DIY and a new series on sewing basics. So please bear with me as I try to fit in the schedule with my school. Just subscribe so you'd know when I have a new video.